Open up with prayer. We come to a Thursday in our, our week of 30 minutes in the Word, studying the book of James, Lord, and we thank you for that. Thank you for what we learned this week and uh, for the worship that's coming up this weekend. We uh, th thank you for the fact that we can be together again every, every, every day as we want uh, and unfettered, just being able to worship you and to learn from you. And we just ask your spirit's presence and empowerment as that happens tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, let me share the screen of uh, James. You see it there, James? Yes. Two yes. verse eight. Yes. Great, great. Okay. So we're going to be looking at the, as far as we get in this chapter tonight, and we'll continue next week. And you remember, uh, James is talking about living out one's faith uh, and uh, that living a type of faith where uh, there are, is no works. Uh, it's a, that's a dead faith. There needs to be and will naturally be a, a bubbling over of one's faith in terms of something happening different in a person's life. Uh, it, you can't hold it in. Uh, and, and, and never uh, express it in any way. And especially when there are opportunities to show love and compassion and, and we fail to do it. And it's a, that's a counterintuitive to the Christian mindset. So he's talking about that. So in verse eight continues. If you really fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbors yourself. You're doing well. But if you show partiality, you're committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak, so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. The one Bible verse that has always been a, a popular one for me to, to share is verse uh, 10, uh, for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of it all. And I would teach the confirmation kids that the, the law of God is like a pulley. Uh, the, uh, like, and, and you have the, the belt of the pulley and if you break it in one area, the whole thing is, is ruptured. And so it is uh, with God's command that if you break in one point, uh, all of it is broken and you become a transgressor. And the one, that word transgressor in the Greek is um, what, what happened here. <laughs> you know, I back to what happened? You lost the share. Did I share <laughs> anymore? Is, am I on share anymore? No. 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 You have us all at like a Zoom family. Yeah, and Bible study quit unexpectedly. Uh, isn't that interesting? Well, let's unexpectedly open it again. Who's <laughs> behind all this? There we go. Uh, let's see if I can if I can share it again here. Um, do you, do you, <laughs> there we go. Do you see that now, verse eight again? Yes. Uh, okay. What I was trying to do is use the word transgressor. There, I should not get overzealous in my clicking. Uh, so, uh, so the the word parabates is a person who is a lawbreaker, one who is a transgressor. So. We are obviously a lawbreaker if we break the law. So we're a transgressor. So if 
So, so who can get to heaven? That's the qu basic question that, that we have to understand. Who can get to heaven? Who can be uh, in God's favor? Those who believe in Jesus Christ dying for our sins. And we believe. That, how does that make one a, a, a favorite, favored by God? How does that do that? Because Jesus Christ took all the sins on the cross. He took all our sins. And so belief in him is the pathway to heaven. Well, so he took the, the sins on the cross. So how does that change our standing? It makes us white as snow. Then we are all forgiven. We are mm -hmm. all forgiven. And um, the chains of death and sin have been taken off and the gates of heaven are open. But only to those who believe. What sins are forgiven on the cross? Are you talking about yeah. original and actual sins? Or? Judy, you're on mute, Judy. Oh, so what sins are forgiven? Uh, the sins we commit after our baptism, the sins we've committed in the past. All uh, sins. Sins of, yeah. what, what sins? So, sins of omission, sins of commission, all sins. Past, Keep present, and future. Okay, so, all. so what about original sin? Does a does a baby have sin in yeah. in him or her? Yes. Yes. So a baby who dies will be will not be in heaven because they have sin. Just That's like, not for no. us to judge. I don't think we can judge who goes to heaven and who does not. That is up to God to judge that. We you know just, what you the just told are, me. You just told me who goes to heaven. What? You just did that. You just told me. You said that the sins of Jesus uh, is what see, taking our sins is what gets us to go to heaven. Right, we have, wrong? That, but we have to believe on him. It doesn't happen if we don't have a belief in him. Yeah, but a baby gets a free pass. But a, yeah, but it depends on what age. So what is original sin? That's from Adam and Eve. When oh. Adam and Eve died, then we... Uh, inherited those sins, they can never be taken away until we go to heaven. Well, how do we get original sin? When you're conceived. Yes, in conception. Is there a Bible passage that can support that? <laughs> yeah, somewhere in Psalms. Oh. What does it say? In your mother's womb, you're conceived in sin. I don't remember exactly what psalm it's in. And that's not talking about uh, having, um, uh, being close to each other and making children. That's not sinful. That's not what it's talking about, right? Mm -hmm. What does it mean then that when you're conceived, you're in sin? How did that happen? It's past because you have a soul. You have not sin now because you're created with a soul. Is there such a thing as an age of accountability? Yes, there is. Are you sinful before your age of accountability? But when well, yeah, you're smirking a bit, Rolly. You can chip. You can you can uh, share a thought too. You know. <laughs> I'm getting us to think a little bit. That's all. I'm just getting us to okay. think. Okay. I, um, I'll, uh, I'll pitch in here. Um, I don't think there is such a thing as original sin. I think it's in our nature as human beings to be sinful, but not the, um, when Adam sinned, what he did is he pronounced, 
everyone who came from Adam would cut would have death. Death yeah. is now part of our, we're all going to die. And so what Jesus is saving us from is that is uh he's offering God is offering eternal life to all of the all of his children um, through Jesus Christ, John 3 16. And uh, that um that's really what we're talking about here now. So it's I I just feel like trying to figure out if a child is going to go to hell uh, because they haven't had a chance to confess Jesus Christ is some, there's something fundamentally wrong with that, especially if we believe that Jesus uh, died that God sent His Son for all people, and um, so I. I would. I've always been a strong believer that God works through families. Um, the whole issue of baptism, for instance, um, we commit our children to uh, to the Lord, and um, we did that for our kids. and that, And I see a big difference between children who are baptized or not baptized. Um, we can't anyway claim that we have anything to do with our salvation. If we do, it's going to be problematic. So, so does anybody have a Luther small catechism handy? No. Uh, look, you don't have to look it up right now, but if you've been through confirmation class, or if you teach confirmation class, then you know that uh, there it the Lutheran doctrine from scripture teaches that there is original sin and actual right. sins. These are it's a nomenclature thing. And that original sin is that which is inherited from the human race, it's part of the human race, condition of the human race. Actual sins is how you display the sinful nature that's already in you. The sinful nature that's already in us uh, doesn't begin when, when you have, you're able to reason things. It's there even as a a small child, you put uh, two children in a room with one toy and, and you see how world wars start because uh, we have to teach them how to share, not how to be selfish, I think. But be that as it may, the idea of running away from God is part of the human condition. That That's why Christ came for all the world, including uh whole households. I think, Rola, you mentioned that part, the whole family. And so there is a responsibility then to raise up the child in the way that he should go so that he, when he's old, he will not depart from it. And the Bible does say we are conceived and born in sin, that uh, that nature comes to us as part of the human condition. And we also know that God's grace uh, triumphs over everything. And in verse 13, it says, mercy triumphs over judgment. God's love triumphs over everything. All we know is how he is what he has told us. And what he has told us is when he died on the cross, he took away the sins of the entire world. That's objective justification. That means for those people in Afghanistan who just blew up our soldiers, he took away their sins. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone sins who have been taken away will get to heaven. Because like I think Karen said, there is this aspect of having a trusting relationship. Uh, I happen to believe that children can have a more trusting relationship with God than adults. Matter of fact, doesn't the Bible say become like a little child. And unless you do, you won't enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's not childish faith, but it's a childlike faith, not doubting. And um, so there can be that. So I, I just wanted us to make sure we understood that to try to get into God's graces, good grace, by keeping the law is playing with a pulley belt. And every time, any time we, we sever that by any infraction, 
of commission or omission, thought, word, or deed, we've broken the pulley, and that way to get to heaven is dismissed to say nothing about original sin, just by the things we do or don't do in our life. That's why uh, it's called the royal law. That's why it's called the law of liberty in verse 12, because it sets us free. And if we know the truth, we're set free indeed. Uh, Jesus is the, the one who has set us free from the burdensome the yoke of the law. But, you know, we cannot judge who is going to heaven and who is not. We have the law and the gospel in front of us, but our human minds cannot um, understand God's ways. And in Exodus uh, 19, he tells, no, it's 33, he tells us, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So it's God's judgment, not ours to decide who goes to heaven and who doesn't. Yeah, our purpose in life is not to judge uh, right. those who are, uh, who, are out, who, who are part of the family of God or anybody else. That, that's why there's judgment day that's coming. God's going to judge at uh, that time, we'll find out. But what we can do within the household of faith is see some flashing red lights where we see uh, the no commensurate uh, mercy or love or kindness coming from a person who has studied their Bible and yet they're not giving any evidence of faith. Can that faith save them? James is giving a big warning here and saying, don't think just because you study the Bible that that's saving faith. It has to reach your heart. Your heart needs to be changed. And when you get a new heart, that's evidence that that evidence will flow out of out of you and the way you live your life. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yep. You know, in Ephesians, he tells us it is by grace you have been saved, not through faith and not by from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Really? Um, I've been thinking a lot about how awful it would be if we only had the law, because if you look at the very first line up here, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you're doing well. Well, none of us, this is our original sin in a sense, this is our nature to love ourselves and, not, not, and put ourselves first. And God has been unwilling <laughs> uh, to forgive the angels who um, rebelled against him. And so they have no hope. They're living, they're just waiting for the, the end to come, knowing that they're going to be damned in the, uh, the lake of fire. Now, suppose we didn't have, suppose we just had the law. Suppose we just knew that God's wrath was going to come on us and that was, there was no way out. I don't think we fully appreciate how great it is to know that we have, um, we have this forgiveness in God's Way, door uh, out of the out of his wrath and out of his judgment um it, i mean you imagine our li living your life without knowing you were going to go to hell in the end and that the, you there was no way to get out of that just it's imagine like somebody that. being rescued uh, from a fire i mean there if you were rescued from a fire by the skin of your teeth you got out you'd be telling everybody you know, the good news, I just got rescued. I just got saved. Uh, but for us to walk around as though we hadn't been saved, there's no joy or no appreciation. That what James is saying, you know, that shouldn't be how the church is. Shouldn't be the frozen chosen, which some have called the LCMS. Shouldn't be that way. And, and it ought not to be that way. Let me, let's look a little further, if we might. Let's go on with verse 14 here. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself if it does not have works, 
is dead. Someone will say, you have faith, but I have works. Or show me your faith apart from your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one? Well, you do well. But even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see, that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works, and the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. Now, you want to know what the central thought is here? Uh, just so you, you feel a little bit better. Uh, it's right here. Um, Abraham believed God. Verse 23. Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. That is pure gospel. The holy God, by God's grace, faith came into Abraham, and he got the, the, the cloak of righteousness, just like we do, by God's grace through faith. All this other stuff is evidence of the faith, evidence of the faith. It doesn't supplant the faith. What James is trying to say is a wake-up church. We have a mission in life, and our faith, it isn't we have to, it's we naturally get to. It's part of what conversion does. If you truly convert it, it's going to effervesce out of every pore of your body, the, the grace of God. You can't help but do that because it's God's spirit that's inside us. It will have to come out if God's spirit is truly inside us. That's how I see it. Questions, comments on these verses? First of all, I don't understand why people keep trying to separate the true faith and works. I mean, obviously, they're joined together. You have one, you have the other. So to try and separate them apart and try and make a case that one is better than the other, I don't understand that. But what we have to do is, first of all, that we love God first. And as a result of loving God, we will want to serve him and do things for our neighbors because that is what he wants us to do. It's all about love. Well, thank you, Karen. Other comments? One or the other. Okay. Other comments? And then I want to just say that in uh, Hebrews 11, it gives a whole list of how people are, why people are saved and what they've done is righteousness. And it starts with um, is it Abel and it goes on and lists all these people and why they were considered righteous. Yeah, that's a good point They're in Hebrews. Okay, anybody else? Try to well, generate some good discussion on this. Yeah, I think Karen, um ask the question i why do we ha have this um this why are, why do we have to have this discussion and i have to say that i i i appreciate this uh, this re these reminders because i find myself wondering if uh, my faith is sufficient and is ev and is and in my life is there evidence of my faith and um you know, it really, um, it's so easy to sit back and think and be, and think you're comfortable in your, in your uh, faith walk, because all I believe, you know, I believe in Jesus and we, 
we have all of you quoting uh, different Bible passages about how um, Jesus uh, saved us and uh, our sins are washed away and all of that. But it's, Karen, I have to say that it's, uh, it's not easy to hold on to our, our beliefs um, in light of the way the world is. Good, and, thank you. Uh, thank you, Roly. Appreciate that. Uh, anybody else? We, we want to get everybody a chance to talk here. Anybody else? Just, I believe that faith is something that you yes, just can't go buy from a supermarket. It's something uh, you get from the power of the Holy Spirit. Where do you get faith? Where we been to that? Have any of you gone to a non-denom church? Have any of you gone to a yeah. Mormon church? No, I went to a Mormon to, uh, Jehovah Witness. You so what's what the what's out there in the world today is not all Lutheran, and it doesn't all talk about grace through faith on account of Jesus Christ, does it? There is confusion between law and gospel, and uh, one of our um, former presidents of our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, a professor. Uh, Walther was his name, wrote a seminal book uh, called uh, Law and Gospel. <laughs> and in it, he really clarified for us what is law and what is gospel. I like, and, and what, what is grace and what is works. And uh, the, he did so because, of course, it comes out of the Roman Catholic tradition where you cannot be saved by. Uh, by God's grace alone, but also by works. The Mormons teach the same thing. And even in the tulip principle of the Reformed churches, you, you, uh, it teaches total depravity. That's the T in tulip. But it also talks about how your election is conditioned or seen by how you behave. And so it, there's differences that cause us to have uh, some some great dialogue with other Christians and non-Christians on this topic. And I'll tell you, I have had those dialogues over the years because there's confusion um, in this area. I think what Karen pointed out and what Roly, you pointed out are really good points to share with people as this topic goes on. But once you're out of the Lutheran circle, there's a lot of confusion on this. Yeah, well, I just want to apologize. I hope I didn't offend anyone. I mean, I get really overzealous when I talk about um, God and how, how wonderful he is and how great he is to us. I didn't mean to be offensive, but it's just, um, I don't know, something that um, I just I'm get sorry if I came across that way, uh, Karen. I really love your comments, and uh, well, we love me. your comments, Karen. You're giving Marilyn a run for the money. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, no, I'm not. That's not my purpose. But you know, for twelve, I guess for twelve years in Oregon, the Lord directed me in a certain way, and um, it was to get to know Him personally and to learn at His feet. And I have so much that He has taught me that I just you know I can't talk enough about it and so well, I get gonna, we're going to get you to lead a women's bible study one of these days <laughs> no it's a praise go ahead and teach to your heart's content yeah okay. well a lot here <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it for tonight though but, uh, this was good stuff so we're we're uh, in chapter three which is going to be <laughs> taming no, the tongue. The tongue. <laughs> <laughs> that's next week oh boy Oh, that'll be fun too. I'll just stop the share right now. Uh, before we close with prayer, anything else? What What is it that you really wanted to say, Hale? Uh, back on verse two, the last three words, can you explain them to me? Uh, the, the last two words in uh, chapter last two. Three the last three words the lord oh, of glory what does that as the body apart from the spirit is dead so also faith apart from works is dead no he said the first 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 the, 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 the lord of glory um 
Lord of Glory is uh, verse. First verse. What verse again? Chapter two, verse one. Oh, chapter two, verse one. Yes. The last three words of the verse. The Lord of Glory. In James. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sure. The, the Lord of uh, Glory. That's just a uh, a term a term for uh, uh, Christ is the one who reveals the glory of God. Because uh, in his incarnation, when he became a human being, uh, he, uh, he showed himself to be God. And his glory was dying on the cross. And from that, uh, he gave the Heavenly Father uh, full glory. So Christ is the one who reveals the glory of God. John 1.14 is an example of uh, a passage that uh, talks about that. Uh, uh, and, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we've seen his glory. What is that? Glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So, so that's what it's talking about there. Okay? Okay. 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 Um, we're going to have to do stump the pastor, I guess, huh? one of these days. All right. Okay. That's it for today. Um, so who would like to lead us? Uh, Marilyn? Yes. Oh, I was just going to have one more comment. I had at the beginning. I don't know if you watched the president today, but he quoted scripture. And I just wanted your idea on he quoted Isaiah. Uh, Here I am. And I just wanted your take on that. You didn't see that, I guess. I thought it was interesting, number one, he quoted scripture and it was here I am from Isaiah, not the first Samuel one. I just thought it was interesting. Uh -oh, I'm not following you. Is this back on our... Uh... No, I'm just saying the president mm. of the... No, 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 the president of the United oh, States... Of oh, the president. Oh, okay. you mean uh, in what he, he was saying quoted... this afternoon? Maybe I didn't catch what he was... I don't and know if I was watching he... that. I thought it was interesting. He quoted Isaiah, here I am. You know, that's a little out of context if that's what he's doing. I, it is, extremely. I just thought it was um, just very interesting. He said, here I am, and like, like, uh, like we're going to, we're... Well, we're listen to it. Just I, interesting. Think, I think it was his version of the buck stops here. <laughs> <laughs> but in, I, God's talking, and is He God now? <laughs> no, it's just interesting. You know, he's, he's, I, think he, I, I didn't even see the verse, but that's the only thing I can think. Well, of. that's uh, next half hour is going to be all about this. But before we do that, <laughs> let's close with prayer, shall we? Who wants yes. to lead us in a closing prayer today? Oh, you do, Marilyn. Okay, thank you. Why not, dear Heavenly Father? We come before Your holy presence, and we learned about faith and works, and. Uh, our great forefather, uh, Father Abraham, how he laid his son on the altar. But it was through his works and through his faith together that uh, you could see his belief in God. And it didn't falter. He knew he would, his son would be saved. And Lord, let us always remember that uh, to be close with you, to walk with you, and to read scripture. And we thank you for the book of James that we're learning from. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.